Alrighty, this video is basically going to serve as a devlog. I haven't live coded any of the changes I've made to my software rendering engine whatsoever. So I guess that since I refuse to absolutely recode it over just for the sake of making a video, I decided to create a devlog. So as you can see, um, crudely, I have gotten texture mapping to work. Um, I went through so much trial and error, I tried to implement... Um, um, the um, the very centric coordinate system in order to rasterize triangles by, you know, going through, you know, filling each pixels. But then I learned that there's actually a much better method called perspective um, correction um, for that algorithm that, you know, obviously we've all learned about, you know, projection, the projection matrix, you know, uh, you know, trying to get that human eye um, to be filtered into how we, you know, design our algorithms. So besides the texture mapping that I've gotten to work, um, I've added in custom game objects that I've defined to start working on scene handling to get a bunch of objects together rendered onto the screen and start texturing them. Um, my drawing routines have changed a bit. Um, with the help of some lovely people, I was able to, for the most part, not really change anything of, of Javid's um, original algorithm, but I did have to use the buffered image class in order to grab um, um, the textures and, and, and the colors associated with them. Um, in, the, in the mesh class, so I was using a very crude method here. So this function here, load object from file, essentially grouped together um, three vertex um well um just a vertex from three floating point or three double position values then it grabbed um three integers that would map to a face of those vertices and i crudely implemented that but then the texture coordinates blasted me so this same amazing person um showed me to the greatness of the reading files instead of you know using a scanner class i can use better methods of reading through files to change them in the strings using the um, the dot split method and dot pattern dot quote method in order to parse the lines better from the string values given to get rid of or ignore certain cases that you don't want to deal with. So that was very good. Um, in the triangle class, I've created some other constructors to use for triangles depending on what I want to do. So I have this where each triangle can have an associated color with it. I have a constructor that initializes the 2D vectors. And I believe there was something else that it obviously I have these cubes here and this pyramid. So these are my custom game objects. I'm going to create more, but for now, the cube and the pyramid is what I have. So essentially the cube class just takes in a mesh and then defines it given an X, Y, and Z, which just serves as its origin point, a width, a height, and a depth value. And then it has um, the um, vertex information, the 2D vertex information to serve as the, um, UV, um, the UV coordinates for drawing. I have this draw function that just handles all of the projection to the screen, all the um, transformations and the and the um, camera implementations and the clipping. And so here I just wanted to demonstrate a bit. Um, let me go here for a second. So let me not texture anything. Get back my old drawing routines. And so for mesh cube, I do not want mesh cube to be this file that I'm reading. I actually want it to be my customizable cube. So as you can see here, I have this cube here. So I have it centered at the origin, and then it just has a width, a height, and a depth of one. But let's say I want to create a slab. So let me create 10 in the width and 10 in the height, just one, I mean, 10 in the depth, and here we go, we have a little slab. So if I wanted this to be rather like a pipe, I can just set this equal to 10. 
this equal to half half since these are double precision numbers i can you know get very very small values there we go sort of like a like a bar a pipe whatever you may consider it and then um as well i have implemented a second cube to get multiple things rendered onto the screen so here i have a auto for loop that's just going to iterate through each um mesh so let's grab all of this all the clipping and drawing routines here all transformations boom paste it in there um So let me go and uncomment out mesh cube two. Use it. Go. There we go. We have two cubes. Um, to show that they will not overdraw on each other, I'm actually going to create this. So if I do t, I don't know why to the next. This should be sort of yeah, basically um a different oriented slab. Where's the other cube at? Or like a bar, fifteen. So it's a bar. There it is. It's behind it. There we go. There we go. So there's no overdrawing. The sorting algorithm to implement the painter's algorithm is working. It was. There's no overdrawing going on. So I'm assuming that if I came behind it, same thing would happen. Just turn oops. Oh. Looking routines are kind of wonky. Here we go. Here we go. Looking nice, neat, and fine. And so I'm going to add more game objects. Not all of them I can create by myself, like sphere cylinders. Um so in here I have a bunch of shapes and I want to actually get all these shapes in here customizable so I can you know change their size their width their, um, and their depth in order to be able to implement um, my own game objects without having to go into blender and then so um, it's going to take me a while to implement all these so the cube and the 3d pyramid and the triangular prism I can most definitely do on my own the cuboid is basically just the cube um, these other ones, though, are going to be very hard to implement, so I'm probably going to use some OpenGL algorithms and look up some vertex information so that I can sort of figure out um, what to do for that. And I think that basically covers everything. It's just the next thing I'm going to be doing is creating scenes, so just getting multiple objects rendered onto the screen, um, completely um, rasterize them, and then get the textures working for them and specifying the textures for different um of um for different objects because obviously their texture coordinates are going to be slightly different depending on the object making sure i have that down i'm um, getting different camera angles you know make sure i have a stronger fundamental understanding of the cameras and of my look at and um and 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 point to um um matrices so i can understand um those so I can implement some of my own cameras. I believe that I need to implement um, pitch and roll because right now I have yaw, which is just rotation around the Y. It's what you can see when I'm turning. But I can have them um, instead of perspective projection. I mean, obviously, I could still use it to rotate like sort of down, but I could also just use an orthographic projection matrix to sort of represent um, what I want as well. That's also an option. But um, one of the biggest things that you'll notice that I had a problem with, so let me just go back here a bit. Um, so the biggest problems that I was having is obviously the slowdown. So the problem that I have with the texture coordinates is that once I do the texturing, on the um 
Oh, well, not the texture. I meant to say the clipping on the um, UV coordinates. For some reason, um, they become mutated and then they all turn into a base color of green. And so I decided to just clip on the triangles. But the problem with this is that it slows down my performance quite a bit. So I thought that multi-threading would actually save this issue, but it's not. So I decided to look into a old Java book that goes over um, um, software rendering from scratch, you know, just, you know, just like I'm doing here. Um, there are more advanced concepts like, you know, collision detection servers, um, probably better texture mapping that, 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 that um, specifically for Java. And so one of the things that they go over, um, they obviously go over the painter's algorithm like we have here, that, um, that sorting algorithm based on um, the Z components of, of triangles. But they also go over um, what is called the binary space partition. And I'm well far away from implementing that, but I would really like to get that implemented to my game to fix my performance so I can start actually, you know, getting serious about the clone. Obviously, getting this far in my own software um, renderer is, 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 is a very good start. You know, it shows a lot of dedication, but there's still a lot more fundamentals that I need before I can actually start working on a Silent Hill clone. Now, another interesting thing about the Silent Hill clone is that, so here, I actually found all the textures in, in, in an old WAD file for the game. So even though that the source code for the game has been largely lost, open this, I've actually found all the textures in this WAD file for the game. So texturing is no longer going to be a problem. It is simply going to be my own ability to create a competent software rasterizer to handle all of these textures that are going to be given to me. And then, you know, handling the AI and other things, which is also covered in that book. I mean, it's a really good book. Um, so the, the slowdown time that I'm getting from texturing is insane. So I also intend to implement collision, also conveniently covered in the book. But um, another thing is that I've been looking at the GTA 3 and Quake source code to look at how they handled collision and just how much faster it is without the texturing for every single pixel. You know, untextured, you know, I'm, you know, going through this so quickly. It, you know, it just takes up so much um, CPU power since I'm not utilizing any graphics card. Here. But yes, so hopefully um, I can implement the rest of my game object so I can start working on creating scenes and those camera angles and start working on that. So yeah, that's my devlog.